Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm heading over to the training facility and I'm gonna do a speed and agility training session. So I'm gonna show you all of the drills that I do. There's five of them in total and you don't need more than six cones to complete the entire session. So something to bear in mind when you're working on your speed and agility is that the game of football is not played in one direction. You're gonna be changing direction throughout the duration of a match multiple, multiple times. And something else is that your muscle fibers, they work differently when you're working in different directions. So when you're sprinting forwards, you've got different muscles working in your legs, different fibers contracting, than when you're moving from side to side, when you're back pedaling, when you're moving diagonally. So you need to be training all of these directions so that that those muscle fibers can be more explosive, become stronger, and this is where you're gonna see improvements in your speed in football. Something else to bear in mind as well, that the races in football, so when you're sprinting, it's usually not over a really long distance. There are a few times where you have to open up and you're sprinting over the full length of the pitch, but the majority of races are actually over just 10 to 20 meters, so it's a lot shorter. So you need to be really explosive over short distances, trying to claw that ground away to get to the ball first. So a lot of these drills are gonna really work on that short, explosive movement over a short distance. So you're not gonna need much room to set up these drills either, which is really good for you guys out there who don't have big full-size pitches. And I'm gonna be doing four reps of each exercise. So with five exercises, it's just gonna be 20 explosive reps. You wanna be going at 100% for each rep. That's why we keep the reps short, so we can go as hard as possible. But anyway, I'll get over to the training facility. I'll do a voiceover of each drill to show you how to set it up, and then we'll get right into it. So let's go. Drill number one is deceleration shuttles. So this is the course, we place two cones down probably about a meter apart to form a gate. We take five steps in front of that gate to place a single cone, another five steps to place another single cone, and then a final five steps to place another gate directly opposite the first gate that we put down. So this drill is really gonna work on our acceleration and deceleration. So acceleration is speeding up, deceleration is slowing down, and you need to have the ability to do both if you wanna be a good footballer. So starting at the gate, low center of gravity, driving up to that first cone, getting around it, then up to the second cone, getting around it, then through the final gate. And then we just turn around and complete it again on the way back. So on the way up, I was going around the cones from left to right, and then on the way back, I'm going around the cones from right to left. So you wanna alternate the direction you're going around those cones so you get a balance on both sides. But this is a great drill. Deceleration is such an overlooked part of playing football. But if you have the ability to stop abruptly with or without the ball, you're gonna either lose your defender a lot easier if you're able to stop and then go in the opposite direction. It's gonna be a lot harder for them to track you. But if you're dribbling as well, it's gonna be able to throw defenders off. And also if you're defending, having to keep up with an attacker who's very tricky, who's stopping and starting all the time. If you're lighter on your feet, you're gonna be a lot more efficient and effective when tracking them. So as you can see, lots of sturdy short steps when going around those cones. Drill number two is shuttles. So we're using the exact same course as we just used, but we're just taking away those two middle cones. And now we're gonna take seven and a half steps away from that first gate to form another gate in between the two that we already had placed. So now we have three gates to work with this time and starting at either of the end gates, we're gonna get a nice low center of gravity, accelerate up to that middle gate, turning 180 degrees back to the start, all the way out to the final gate, back to the start one more time, and then accelerating all the way through that third and final gate. So this is really working on that 180 degree turn, which is essential in football because sometimes your team will be on the attack, you'll be driving up the pitch, and suddenly you turn the ball over and you have to get back as quick as you can defensively. So you have to turn 180 degrees and accelerate. So this is really gonna work on that, a nice sharp turn and accelerating up as quickly as possible. So for the first two shuttles, you're gonna be more of an acceleration. You're not actually able to get into a full sprint, but on that final shuttle, when you're driving all the way through to the end gate, that's when you're gonna open up and drive those knees even more, really opening out your stride. Number three is the lateral shuffle. So we place one cone down, we take four wide steps in front of that first cone, turn 90 degrees, take another four steps to place our third cone, four more steps directly out in front of that cone to place another one, 
and then we complete a square by taking another four steps and then we do a final four step to place our final cone which is our end point or our start point depending on which side we want to begin from. So then starting at either side we're going to drive up to that first cone then lower our center of gravity even more so you can see I really drop down to move into a lateral shuffle and then you're going to shuffle sideways so you've really got to be light on your feet clawing that ground away sideways up again and then you're lateral shuffling the opposite direction as well so you get an even amount of work both to the right side and the left side because you're loading one leg more than the other when you do a lateral shuffle so when you're pushing off to the left you're really loading that right leg because that's clawing the ground away and then when pushing off to the right you're really loading the left leg So let's just look at this in slow-mo. As you can see, when I drop down into the lateral shuffle, really lowering that center of gravity, that's gonna make you move a lot more agile. Number four is cross hairs. So this is how we set it up. We place one cone down. We take five steps to place a center cone. We turn 90 degrees to the right. Take five more steps to place a third cone. Then we return back to the middle. All the way out to the other side another five steps from the middle cone to place a fourth back to the middle one more time turning left 90 degrees this time to place our fifth and final cone and this is going to be a great drill for working on a 90 degree turns as you'll see so you start at any of the outside cones nice low center of gravity drive to the middle nice and low around that corner turning 90 degrees back to the middle every time we hit one of the outside cones always turning to the right hand side the first time through and then the second time I'm turning to the left each time. So again, getting nice and low around those cones. And then when you hit the outside cone, it's a 180 degree turn back to the middle. And then we're turning to the left. So you wanna do four reps in total, two going to the right hand side and two going to the left. And the key with this one is to take a lot of little tiny steps when you're going around those corners. So this is where those agility ladder sessions really come into action. So nice, quick, stuttery steps around, really clawing that ground away from you. It's gonna help with your balance if you really take small steps and you're gonna have a lot more traction, light on your toes to push the ground away so you can be nice and explosive. All the way back to the start, four reps in total. Number five is the diagonal square. So what we're gonna do is take those outside cones that we were just using for the crosshairs drill and walk five steps forward with them to place them down. And it's gonna form a perfect square eventually around that center cone. So we're gonna use this square to go around but also using that middle cone as well. This time working on some more diagonal movements. So we're really covering that last direction. We've worked on forwards, backwards, side to side. Now we're gonna be working on some diagonals as well. So we start at any of the outside cones, drive to the middle, out to the next cone, back to the middle, and going around each corner until we've made our way all the way back to the start. So as you can see, when you're hitting that middle cone, it's a really acute angle, almost coming back on yourself, but going out diagonally. So again, the technique, we're taking those small stuttery steps around the corners, really clawing that ground away from you, trying to stay as light on your toes as you possibly can. And also with this one, just like crosshairs, if you went left, the first time through after you hit that first cone, the next time through you're going to go all to the right because you want to get a balance on both sides. Alright guys, so that's the speed and agility session done. Just did four reps of each one and as you can see, absolutely knackered. Very short, sharp and explosive work, but very applicable to the game of football. We covered every direction you could possibly go. So we went forwards, a little bit of backwards as well because there are times in the match where you have to backpedal really quickly. So it's good to set your feet. Also, we did some diagonal movements. We did some right angle turns. We really covered it all there. You need to be fast in every direction in football because you never know what's going to happen. The ball could deflect in a certain direction. You need to be able to change direction at top speed to get to the ball first. So make sure you're working on these types of drills. Combine them with your strength training. Combine them with the fast footwork stuff that we did last week and you will see huge improvements on the pitch. As you can see, didn't need much room, only need five cones or other objects you have lying around the house to set up every one of the courses. I know this type of training isn't exciting as some of the skills that we do. I know a lot of you want to see skill moves and shots and things like that, 
but you have to work on the stuff as well. I would much rather come out here and just work on skills, just work on shots, but I know I'm not going to be a complete player on the pitch if I only do technical work. Even though it's a lot more enjoyable, you have to do the gritty stuff as well if you want to excel and advance onto the next level. So I know this isn't as entertaining, but I want to show you everything. I want you guys to be complete players, and this kind of stuff is going to boost your game. So make sure you give these training sessions a go. And if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in my next video. Yeah.